What's up, Shazatters? So earlier today, we did a, uh, a review of the Bird Rock poem from the 2023 uh, Form A handbook. Uh, today, we're going to use the same handbook uh, and use the Form B, the Spark of Everything, I think is the name of it. Uh, let me see what I have here. Um, and we're just going to pretty much just jump right into this. So give me one second to get my screen oriented. Yeah, looking for the small spark of everything. Uh, well, I'm trying to set this up. I'm Greg from Greg's Tutoring NYC. Uh, hit me up if you guys have any questions. Uh, I'm randomly going through the 2023 handbook at this point. Uh, I did some of the math grid-ins. I'm doing these two here. I might bounce around through the multiple choice after this, the math multiple choice in both forums. Uh, basically, I'm not sure I have enough time to go through cover to cover, but I'm going to do my best at it, okay? So that's pretty much our, our situation, and that's the way we kind of progress through this. Uh, I did some of the math. Okay, uh, we seem to be live, so I'm going to put this over here. Whoops, let me see here. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, uh, this other streams worked well since the fiasco of doing the uh, the form A questions. Um, I also did form B of the gradients as well. So we have a poem looking for the smallest spark of everything. Okay, spark of everything. No clue whatsoever what it could be about. Uh, normally we should keep the title in mind though as just a little tiny data point. Um, this part here, normally it's italicized. That's called the abstract. Always read it. Normally, it might give you date information, setting information, uh, and something about kind of the premise of what's going to eventually be thrown at you guys. Uh, so let's, I'm going to read this through, and I'm going to make comments on it, just like I did on all the other passages I've ever uh, done. Uh, located underground near Geneva, Switzerland, the Large Hadron Collider, also known as the LHC, helps scientists study and understand how the smallest particles of matter interact with one another, okay? The LHC against the Large Hadron Collider propels atomic particle beams along a 17-mile ring. All right, most likely they're not going to ask us too much about that, but let's see. Um, and I assume this smallest spark has to deal with the particles that they're talking about there because this is also talking about the, the smallest particles of matter. So obviously there's something going on here. Uh, just off the bat, this seems weird because it seems to be a science passage, but it's a poem. So uh, although I've read enough math and science uh, poetry, um, there's often a little spin to it. Um, you might even argue that it's not poetic, so to speak. Uh, and there's a little flavor of that in here too, that it's not quite uh, a poem that you'd expect it to be, which puts its own little spin on it. Just remember that, and this is true of biographical passages, science passages, uh, informative passages, recipes, um, the literary aspects of, of the passage are still the same. There's still going to be a main idea. There might be a tone, or there is going to be a tone. There is going to be a character or a main thing. Uh, there might even be a theme. There's a plot. There's a summary. There's all these things that are all going to be the same. There might be turning points. Um, there might be a, a problem that has to be solved. All these are just true for all things. Uh, again, like I said earlier for the uh, Bird Talk poem, uh, there's this extra layer on top of here of the figurativeness. Um, I've done this, read this poem and done the questions a few times already. Um, I don't really find it too nuanced in terms of a poem. Uh, it's more twisty in terms of just a regular passage. To me, that's that's my take on this. Okay, um, so let's go through it. Looking for the small spark of everything. 
There are the things that the world is made of, things we can see and feel. And then there are the things even smaller than the things we, we see and feel and that the world is made of, things that seem to exist only when we are looking right at them. Okay, so there's, is this matter or is this just regular stuff, right? Like the pencil or the computer or whatever. So it's hard to tell exactly where the author is really on this here. Um, and by the way, they're not giving the author's name. I'm not sure why. Uh, the author's name might be at the bottom here. Let's see. No, they don't give the author's name. So this might be in the public domain or that's just a mistake that they left out. Okay. Um, so beneath the level of molecules are atoms. So we're going even lower okay, than what we basically see. And beneath the atoms, we find protons, electrons, and neutrons. So the author's going down the physical characteristics of, of things, what things are. And beneath that, what is there? Okay, so uh, we're talking subatomic, maybe? Is, is that where the author's going here? I'm asking myself this question as well as asking you guys. Um, because we are talking about everything here, your fingernail, the candy at the back of your mouth, um, the coffee your teacher drank this morning, right? It's all it's in their digestive system already here. Your little sister and the stuffed dog she used to carry on with her everywhere and everywhere. So that's weird. Why did, why did the author do that? Why did the author talk about carrying on the stuffed animal everywhere and then say and everywhere? That's in contrast to this everything. Because the author's saying it because we are talking about everything here and everywhere. So this is kind of a sidebar, if you will, discussing what some of those things might be, giving examples. All right. So uh, this everywhere here looks like it's the same as this everywhere here, but it's it, it's not. It's not. Okay. Uh, so everything and everywhere. So the author slaps that back in our face again, are made up of the same stuff, whatever it is. All right. So the author seems to be going down to being asking us, what what is that? Okay. And in fact, that's the next thing. How do we find it? So once we get down to those levels where the author is asking, uh, what are those other things from up here? Uh, let me change the color of the pen to, to highlight that, just to make sure uh, we we know that we're be, what we're referring to uh, as we go through this back and forth. Uh, let me make that red. No, I'm going to not make that red because may, we may come back to this. May, let me make it dark green. So the author is asking this stuff beneath that, and what is the stuff beneath it in the green here? And then the, ask, the author is also asking not only what is it, but how do we find it? Okay. Uh, and then the author is giving some examples of how we might find it. Uh, we can listen for it in the wavelengths from deep space, talking back to us from unimaginable distances. Or we can build long, deep circular tunnels beneath the surface of the Earth and raise particles. And I'm going to ignore that paren right now. Raise particles until everything we think we know bangs against everything else we know. So in the one case, we think we know versus what we do know, all right? And I'm going to reread it a second time, including that parenthesized expression about the race cars. Um, so how do we find it? We can listen for it in the same way then from deep space, talking back to us from unimaginable distances. Or we can build long, deep circular tunnels beneath the surface of the Earth and race particles like racing cars, only very tiny cars, flashing along at close to the speed of light until everything we think we know bangs against everything we do know. So uh, there's exploration going on here. Experimenting. I'm just going to put exping. So again, these are codes for you to keep track of what's happening in the passage, as well as kind of taking notes, as well as engrossing yourself so 
uh, if you happen to find this boring or uninteresting or, or hard, that you're somehow involving yourself in the process of the critical analysis of it, okay? Um, and it's re-emphasizing the topic here that everything and everywhere are made up of stuff, okay? And then, sorry, and there in the explosion, in the darkness, briefly incandescent, they appear. What are the theys, okay? The quarks, the, lep the leptons, and the bosons, and these things and these things. It's usually not important, especially in the science passages, to know every single detail I give. Now, usually there might be an evidence question that you're going to be asked to solve about this. So this is kind of a heads up that that's there. Uh, but in a traditional passage, there's normally a larger passage, uh, sorry, a larger paragraph uh, with some that's really packed with details, a whole bunch of names, a whole bunch of locations, a whole bunch of uh, dates, uh, a whole bunch of uh, Latin words, uh, whatever, whatever the case may be. So uh, normally our job is not to memorize the passage. It's just to remember that I kind of talked about these things. Uh, in some detail, we can't be completely ignorant and oblivious of it, but we do have to kind of follow it at a certain level uh, of to, to be in sync with it. But every last nuance is usually not important, especially weird names like this. So we already had above. Uh, let me change this to red. That's one reason why I wanted to make uh, the color green for, for them. If we have these here, first of all, we had the molecule, and then it talked about the atom, and it's giving us names like this, the proton, electron, and the neutron. And now when we come down to here, it's it's giving us all these. Okay, so it might ask about them, but to memorize literally quark and whatever and whatever and whatever, it's usually not going to do that. It's what's more important is to know what where the, the thing was located. So you would write something here, like the parts. Right, because early in the poem, the, the author's asking, what are those things? Right, the author's asking, can we, can we look lower into matter and, and see what's happening? So some, something here is revealing what those things are. Uh, their names sound like dinosaurs or maybe bands playing terrible music in somebody, someone's garage. Uh, that is uh, kind of silly, right? So... Um, why is the author doing that? And when odd things like that happen in the passage, I kind of take note because that's probably where a question is going to end up being coming from. Not a guarantee. But normally that's the case uh, on something like that. Okay, let me just check that we're live. Uh, we got a few people in the lobby again. Welcome. Please like, subscribe, uh, set your notifications. There's more of these coming. I know it's late in the uh, the process of doing the SHSAT, but better late than that, never, right? So, um, so that's what we got going on there. All right, let me flip back into here. Um, the one thing we know for sure is that they spin. So again, it's talking about these subatomic things and so on. Uh, this is how gravity enters our world, how the world is held together, both together and apart, right? So anybody knows anything about science and the bond between things, um, think think of like gravity pulls, uh, but our gravity is based on a magnet. We also know mag a magnet can repel. So um, there's that interaction going on between things all the time. <clears throat> where it can uh, bring together and rip apart, if you will. Uh, so this is how gravity enters the world, how the world is held together and apart. What keeps together your pencil in your hand right now, as well as us being separate from, say, Jupiter. Okay, And again, the author emphasizes they spin. And it is only down there in the darkness and the vast garage where physicists jot down what they can 
whatever seems more most real, dash dash, that they let us perceive their wild dancing combusting to the music they make. So uh, let's take away the dashes there. Uh, if we just bracket out that, just to make sure we're understanding the sentence. So it says they spin. That's not the physicists. It's not the scientists. It's talking about the particles. Uh, they spin, and it is only down there in the darkness that they let us perceive their wild dancing, combusting to the music they make. So this is this is metaphoric language. It's figurative. Um, it's not this. That doesn't mean the scientists are down in the basement or a garage dancing. Uh, it's just talking about the atoms where if they're spinning, uh, it's giving them a, a personification, kind of really a distorted slash mild personification. So that's that's kind of where we're going through this. All right. Um, so, uh, again, Naomi, when you read a passage, uh, what you should be doing is snapshotting the main idea. So, uh, and part of that is understanding what the topic is and why the author is writing about this. Okay. Uh, that doesn't leave out to a lot of students. Um, so instead of snapshotting it, let's make believe you can't figure it out. Uh, what I normally suggest students do, and this is not poetry specific, it's, it's about all of them. Uh, once you read the passage, well, for some students, it's helpful to read the questions first. Not some students that overloads their short term memory and it doesn't work. So, what you need to do with something like that is practice it. Practice that and see if it works for you or not. Uh, the second thing you're going to do is read the passage um, and then uh, snapshot the main idea, and then you're going to go look at the questions. Remember, you do not have to answer the questions sequentially or in order, and you don't have to answer the, the passages in order either. However, uh, no pun intended, uh, but you should consider a whole passage as an atom. The reason you want to do that is because if you do a passage, only answer like four out of the X questions, and I think there's nine on this passage. So let's say you only answer five. You don't want to go do the rest of the test and come back to this. The problem is when you come back to it, you have to reread the passage, and you may not have time to do that anymore. Basically, uh, even with the best of pacing, uh, you it's the timing is tight, all right, and you you usually don't want to do that. You usually want to still still get to a question that you know you can't answer. Well, your argument might be, well, I know I can't answer for four of the uh, the poetry questions or whatever. All right, well, yeah, but still. All right, wait a second, my phone is freaking out. Okay, there we go. So you still want to be able to um be able to get to to do that. All right. So uh, anyway, the next thing you want to do is when you do the questions, you want to usually do the line number reference questions first and the vocabulary questions. The reason that's handy is because usually they, they're by context only. And a vocabulary question usually is pretty focused, okay? Not always. Many questions refer to the main idea as a whole, including the line number and vocabulary questions. However, uh, you have to start somewhere. And uh, the way at least my brain works, and I experimented with students doing this, is to do the line number questions and the vocabulary questions first. Okay, That allows you to do a partial reread of the passage. Right? You're going to go look up the answers. You're not going to depend on your memory. You're going to go look up the answers and see what makes sense. Okay, And at that point, you're going to go to the, past, the, the questions with the bold face thingies in them where they give uh, quotes from the passage, that's in boldface. And at that point, you've probably done about half the questions. Um, and at that point, you can just do them in any order you want to at that point because you kind of did the full read, you uh, did a half a read or a third of a read to answer the other questions. And at this point, you have a better understanding of the passage, especially since you negotiated through the vocabulary and the line number questions, all right? So that's, that's just a strategy. It's, it doesn't work for everybody. Uh, it's an idea. It's worth experimenting. And experimenting doesn't mean trying on a passage. It doesn't mean trying on two passages. Normally it means trying out like 10 to 12 passages, all right, just to make sure. Anything new takes getting used to. Um, and, you, and, you, and you can do this. I've worked with students and 
and this suggestion does work uh, to do that. All right, so um, all right, so let's just try to answer these questions. So just as an example, uh, 40 is the bold face one. Uh, 41 refers to the specific line, so I'd probably do that first. Uh, 42 refers to the specific line, so I'd probably do that second. Uh, the, the, all these other ones are bold phase, so I do this through my second wave, if you will. So there's a lot using bold phase references here. Uh, an awful lot using the bold phase references there. Okay, this also uses lines. Uh, there does not seem to be a vocabulary question here. No. So there was just basically a lot of line number references and the bold phase questions. And I'm not sure there's any other category here besides those two groups. All right, so I'm just going to go through this sequentially so that I'm keeping track of what we did or not did. Okay, so 40 says, read these lines from the poem. They give you the lines, so there's no reason to go back unless you want a context. That's, that's also important. Uh, the nice thing about these boldface excerpty things, uh, when the questions do that is, Enough times you don't need to go back, especially if you just read the passage. So, uh, so beneath the level of molecules are atoms. And beneath the level of atoms, we find protons, electrons, neutrons. And beneath that, what exactly? Okay, these lines help develop a central idea of the poem by revealing the speaker's what? Okay, interest in determining how the parts of matter work together. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's part of what the passage is about. So, so let's keep that in the running. Uh, F, curiosity about what makes up matter. Well, they're asking a question, so they're curious. And then later on, we know later on in the poem that the author resolves this. So, um, so that actually probably is, is pretty well good. So I would go with F for sure. Um, and uh, the central idea, desire to prove that particles make up matter. Um, no, there's no sense that the author's trying to prove that. Um, although this is a learning process, the author's talking about a learning process, but I don't think the proof is part of what the, uh, what the passage is about. It's more about a discussion and the research and the exploration of it. So uh, I would rule out G for that reason. And then H uh, is the line developed, these lines develop a central idea by revealing the speaker's questions about what tools are needed to study matter. Um, so even though they're uh, bringing up the collider and basically how it's gonna work, I assume that's the tool they're talking about um, or some other process they're using. Um, but I don't think that's the central idea. Uh, the use of the collider is certainly a, a big focus of the passage of the poem, but I don't know that the collider in and of itself is the main idea, right? So, so I avoided talking about the main idea up until this point, but we, we need to resolve it to answer this question, right? So it, it's dealing with uh, continuing the research into finding out about these subatomic particles, right? Uh, and we know the passage indirectly is referring to the Big Bang, if you know what that is. Um, that's probably taking too wild to leap because you're not supposed to bring external knowledge into a passage. Uh, but that's basically doing and dealing with the creation of the universe is really where they're exploring this here, um, that kind of a thing. And, um, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's, still, there's still, so the author's trying to say is, e even though we can see stuff, and we know stuff is there. We're continuing to explore and research uh, these things about the, the creation of the universe out of matter itself. And uh, basically they're unsolved slash unresolved. So that's the premise of the collider in the first place. Okay, so if we kind of take all that kind of together, um, that's really uh, emphasizing what F is about. So it's about researching further and trying to address the unresolved parts, especially the parts we can't see. We kind of know they're there, and 
the question is kind of how do we know they're there and what's going on? Those kind of things like that. All right. So, so that's that's what's happening with forty, and for that reason, the answer would be F. Um, now E E is E is okay. So we threw out G and H completely. E is okay, um, but it's not necessarily about how they're working together. Okay, although that's certainly part of it. The, the main idea of the passive is the, the curiosity and the research into the unresolved parts of, of matter. Okay, those kinds of things like that. So, so kind of be clear on that. That's, 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 it's a kind of a tie-breaking discussion you have to negotiate in your head. But that's, that's what makes this important and so on. Okay, uh, the break. From the second stanza, line 15 through 14, and the third stanza serve as a transition. So they're saying we have we have a stanza. There's a, a blank line, stanza one, and that's followed by another stanza below it. So the question is, what what is happening? Why did the author put that blank line there right then and there? Okay. Uh, it's basically a stanza is is your poetic paragraph, right? So so why split it there? Was there a different topic being discussed? Was there uh, a turning point happening in the story? Uh, stuff like that. So uh, it's talking about between fourteen and fifteen, right? That's where the the two groups uh, are split. So let's go back to fourteen and fifteen and try to make sense of it. So I'm gonna draw I'm gonna just draw a line under it. Okay. So um it seems like the author from paragraph from sentence five, that second stanza, is uh, addressing uh the subatomic particles and what exactly they might be. Uh, also, in general, we're talking about everything being everywhere. Um, and then 15 through 25 is is dealing with how do we find the things, right? That's the question I circled. How do, how do we find the, the subatomic particles, it, you know, and, and be able to talk about them and stuff like that? So, so let's see if we can get something that goes on to there. The problem with a question like this is, uh, we can come up with an answer. Uh, does the use of strategy like cover the answers and try to guess the answer? But that doesn't always work on the, the reading comprehension section of that matter because they may put a spin on it that we didn't necessarily think about. Uh, and often you're thinking of the most direct answer, but they can give indirect sidebar uh, perspectives to it. So that's what you want to uh, be able to figure out and, and think through as well. So the break serves as a transition. From something to something, from point A to point B, th a concept A to concept B, X to Y, right? So uh, the transition is to identify the physical objects to explaining the particles. Well, he talked about uh, coffee and your little sister and the, the stuffed animal, um, e even though he was also talking about protons, electrons, and neutrons, to the particles that make up. All physical things are observed. So that is part of it. Uh, I, I can buy A. Uh, is the transition between those two, those two stanzas uh, to suggest? So first of all, this is identifying, and I like that too, actually. Uh, suggest that the visible world is made up of simple materials to revealing why the invisible world uh, as material that makes the world complicated. No, I, 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 I think, I think even saying that, that the second stanza is discussing simple materials. I don't think there's really anything simple about coffee or or a stuffed animal or your little sister. So uh, they're easier to talk about more abstractly, abstractly perhaps. But um, so so are the subatomic particles. So I don't think I don't buy B there. Um, in fact, I think it's it's just straight out wrong. Uh, I don't like the word simple, if you want to use that. Um, and I don't really like the, the complication thing, because I think anything can be complicated. And I don't know that the author is going there at all. So um, I, I can't see that. So B is out the window. 
how did the two how does the transition work between the two stanzas? Is it discussing the methods used to study particles in space, to describing how matter is researched on Earth? No, it's not. Uh, that's not part of that at all. So it's definitely not that. Right? There's no methods being talked about in the second one, and the next one is not about necessarily about how it's researched. Okay. And then D uh, is the transition to describe an environment that feels comfortable to characterizing an environment that seems unstable. Uh, I think, again, the, auth the, the test writer is trying to basically say, like, you know, we understand humans and coffee, but these little tiny things we can't see, we don't understand. I don't, I don't think that's where uh, this is going to, and that's not the intent. And I don't think that was in the author's mind at all. So D is out the window. So the transition is to identify common physical objects to explaining how they, uh, they're made up in, inside of themselves. That, and, and, and everything, right? Matters everywhere and everything or whatever the author said. So, uh, so I can buy a completely there. I don't even think there's anything ambiguous at all there. <clears throat> and I say that because sometimes an answer can be the answer but weak. Uh, this notion of finding the so-called best answer can get slippery, uh, but, you know, just got to deal with it. Okay, 42. Uh, the main purpose of the comparison um, in 23 to 24. So let's look at 23 to 24 and see what the comparison even is. And I might try to copy and paste that down here. Uh, let me see. What was it saying? Twenty three and twenty four. Uh, yeah. Let me let me try to drag uh, that down to the question so we don't have to keep going back and forth. Uh, it's not letting me click that. Come on. Hmm. Uh. Yuck. No, it's it's not. Let me select that. Why is that the case? Uh. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to fly by night on it and just refer back and forth. So, twenty three, and twenty four is this parenthesized thing right here. Okay, so that was about the, the thing being the racing car or whatever. So the main purpose of the comparison of the of that that reference to the racing cars is to show uh, that the particle size makes them difficult to see. Uh, that could be interesting. I I, I can buy that. Uh, is the main purpose of the comparison to show that the particles move within the tunnel? Yeah, especially since it's referring to racing cars. So this the movement of the cars. Uh, is the comparison to the racing car uh, of the particles uh, that they have a familiar shape? No, I don't. I don't think the author is trying to say they look like cars. So it's not G at all. Uh, and then uh, G is almost silly. Uh, is the main purpose of the comparison of that parenthesized uh, thing to show how the particles can be seen only in darkness? Okay, let me refer back to that real quick. Twenty three and twenty four, and we can reread it actually, including. Including that whole sentence that it's in. So we can build long, deep circular tunnels beneath the surface of the earth and race particles uh, like racing cars, only very tiny, flashing along in the speed of light until everything we think we know bangs against everything else we know. All right, so uh, let's go back to that. I wish I could have copied and pasted that. Uh, is it about them only being seen in darkness? Is that the main purpose of the comparison? No, that's, it's not about only being seen in darkness. So H is out the window. 
Okay, so now we have two answers that seem to be pretty good. Uh, I think we're at a tiebreaker. Uh, I wouldn't call this a hair splitter because the resolution, I think, is easy. Uh, so it says the main purpose of the comparison is to uh, discuss the sizes or the movement. That's really what this comes down to. Is the comparison about the sizes or the movement? So we know that the the, the passage is talking about size of things because it keeps getting smaller and smaller into small particles. Uh, but is that the intent to say that uh, that it's in this collider thing, uh, which is tiny, it's moving at the speed of light, okay? Um, and is the point of that to isolate maybe the electrons and all this other stuff uh, so that we can actually see them, physically see them, because they're so tiny? Or is it about the movement, all right? So let's, let's try to tie break uh, between E and F by going back to 23 and 24. I'm going to try one more time to copy that. Because I think the next question also uh, would be nice if, if we were able to, to copy and paste some of this stuff. Give me one second. I'm not sure why it's not letting me do that. Um, let me try something else. So might, let me pull it off of the drop down menu. Uh, I normally don't use it that way. So let's see. Uh, de -de 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 -de. Selection. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, I'm going to select it from here. Okay, I should better copy that. And now if I come back down to here, and let's see, let me bring the pen back. It's not letting me bring the pen back. Uh, there's the pen. Okay, there we go. All right, we should be able to paste that now into the question and get a better view of what we're talking about for the answer here. Uh, so we're here, and if I paste this here, there we go. So let me try to drag it. Um, ah. Wait, wait, wait. No, that didn't work anyway. Uh, it only dragged my uh, note, my, my notations. Um, all right, so let's go back up to it one more time. Uh, technology, it can be so wonderful and horrible at the same time. Okay, so um, he here's the thing. Is it about the size or the movement, right? But remember the, the thing I circled here. Uh, actually, let me bring back uh, the pen. What I circled here was how do we find it? And that's more about its physics location, so to speak, and not about its visibility per se. All right? In other words, the author says, how do we find it? The first way do we find it is we can, we can listen for it. Right? That's what it says immediately following it. We can, we can listen for it. Okay? All right. Or or we can do everything following this. All right. So it's not about it's not about its size. It's about its its physics, its location. All right. It's about its location. So if we go back to the question. <clears throat> then that would be the tiebreaker for me about F. Because it's not it's saying how do we find it? We can listen to it or we can watch it is kind of basically what it's saying. Okay, so F, F would win from there. Okay, read 25 to 26 from the poem. So that's, that's the next two lines uh, after what we, just, we, we were just looking at. So until everything we think we know bangs against everything else we know. Okay, so uh, in working with students, it, it seems like they're confusing the particle collision to what the scientists are doing. And it's not their fault. I think the poem is a little slippery that way. So, um, you know, uh, it, 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 it's even uh, not as clear to me. So, um, so 43 is saying, the line helps develop a central idea in the poem. 
Okay, so this is again is getting back to what is the main idea of the poem by suggesting. So what how does this uh, interact with the main idea is basically what they're asking. Okay, so uh, is this suggesting that creative methods for researching particles are frequently being invented? Is that what this boldface thing here is saying? No, I, I wouldn't think so. Okay. Um, so it doesn't seem to be a... Uh, I'm actually not going to rule it out because I, I'm not sure of the full answer set here yet. So uh, it, does these, this line develop the central idea? And remember, we talked about the central idea earlier, which is about researching you know, the subatomic situation. Right, researching how particles interact, um, it's and particularly the invisible particles. And that there's still unresolved slash unsolved things that we're we're doing here. So um, that's the key here. What says we think we know, versus against everything that we do currently know. So this is about expanding horizons, broadening our knowledge base, things like that. So for that reason, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a actually then. Ongoing research continues to add to our knowledge of particles. That's exactly what I just said. Okay. Uh, C. Our understanding of particles is limited by the equipment. Uh, I think they tried to use that earlier by the use of tools, uh, where I was talking about the collider is not really the focus of the passage. It's just the vehicle to communicate that that essence of that by the author. So um, this is not about limitation of the equipment, even though that's probably true. Okay, the main idea of the passage is not about the limitation of the equipment. All right, so C is out the window for that reason. And then the line, these lines here, that what we think we know is banging up against everything else we know. Right, this is not the particles. This is humans. Right? This is this is talking about humans, not a, not the particles in the collider. A lot of students that think the electrons are banging into each other or something. That's not what's being referenced here. <clears throat> uh, com competing theories about particles provoke scientific debate. Uh, there might be competing theories, there might be debate, but I don't even see that the poem even goes there. So D is just just the left field thingy here. Uh, we're left with B. Let's just double check it. Uh, everything we think we know bangs against everything that we do know. So as we're progressing along and learning further, uh, we're grokking and getting this this thing here. So ongoing research. That's that's a major thing in here. That this ongoing research continues to add to our knowledge of the particles. All right. So that's that's key. That's that's what the main idea is about. Uh, Forty four. So this continues on, right? 42 is about 23 to 24. 43 is about 25 to 26. 44 is about 27 to 28. So they're continuing. And there, in the explosion, in the darkness, briefly incandescent, they appear. Now, if I'm not mistaken, 27 is the next stanza, though. It's not immediately right after that. Let me just double check that. Uh, yeah, so... 27 is right here. So that's that's after that. After, after it's discussing about the human stuff, it's going back to the collider now. Okay? And then it, what follows immediately after that is the names of the particles that appear. Okay? So let's go to that question about 27 and 28. I'm not sure where it is. So, and there in the darkness, in, in the explosion in the darkness, briefly incandescent, they appear. So, uh, if you don't know the vocabulary, this, so this indirectly is not only an evidence question and an understanding question, but it's also a vocabulary question. So, if you didn't know what incandescent means, it's basically something lightly glowing. A light bulb, is, you have incandescent light bulbs, it'll glow or whatever. Uh, so, this imagery, the visual, the so called visual of this, Reveals that the speaker what? What does the speaker do or see or want or need or whatever? So the imagery, this actually visual. Imagine again, I uh, used reference, I think, in the bird talk about a, a movie. Again, a scene from a movie 
where you're panning through something. And this might be one of the scenes that's occurring and where are the observers as well. So what would be the imagery of this, okay? Uh, that the speaker envies the physicists who research colliding particles. So first of all, I, th I, think, I think that the speaker uh, is enjoying this and is uh, curious about this and is, uh, wants to be an interactive participant. So um, I, I believe that's true. So this is true. Um, and I believe it, that is partially revealed as well. So I buy E, okay? Uh, because you can almost be alongside the, uh, the speaker watching this happen. Uh, has personally observed colliding particles. Well, I'm not quite sure what that means because uh, it's basically saying we can't see them. They're invisible. And even if we can, it's super hard. So I don't know if this is saying that the person was walking down the block and saw the particles. That would be false. Or is, is through the imagery, is witnessing the particles. Um, I'm not convinced of that. I'm not convinced of that. So I'm going to put a tilde here, and I'm ready to cross it out. I, d I really don't like that choice. Uh, the imagery being discussed here, uh, is it revealing that the speaker admires the powerful reaction that occurs when the particles collide? Um, yes, I like that. This, this is almost, this is almost, wow. Right, if you will. There. In the explosion, in the darkness, briefly incandescent, they appear. Ta da da the particles. You know, that kind of a thing. All right. So so that that does work. Uh in fact G G works a lot. And then uh does this imagery reveal that the speaker has a simplistic understanding of how the particles collide. Uh we probably all do because we're all lay people. Um I'm not convinced the speaker is a scientist or not, and even a scientist. Uh, they probably speak at certain points simplistically, but I don't think uh, I don't think I don't think the speaker is trying to trivialize this. That's that's not what's happening here. So for that reason, H is out. Um, and uh, let me just look at F. I was not jumping up and down over F, and I was I was jumping up and down over G though. Um, but let's just look at F again. Uh, the imagery reveals that the speaker has personally observed it. Yeah, I'm I'm just not buying it, so F is out the window, and we're left with G, so that's confirming. The imagery reveals that the speaker admires the powerful reaction that occurs when the particles collide. So this question is about the particles colliding. The question up here, forty, the previous question, this is not about the particles colliding. Okay. Again, 43 was about humans. 44 is about the particles. So be careful with that. Okay, 45. Again, we're reading on uh, a couple lines down still. Let's see, that ended at 28. And this is going to reference 30. So their names sound like dinosaurs. So this, so this is between where it says... Uh, this incandescent thing we just had in the other question, it lists the names of, of the particles, and then this is, I believe, the next line or whatever. Um, their names sound like dinosaurs, or maybe bands uh, playing terrible music in somebody's garage. So this is, this I think I pointed out was just silly. Uh, and I guess because it's a poem that that's worth adding into there, not quite sure. It seems to take a divergence to what the main idea was about, things like that, but but let's see where they're going with here. And that might be why uh, this is a question, because it does take that, it does add that silliness in and, and that divergence to things. So the speaker refers to familiar objects and events in the lines most likely. So we're not sure why the speaker does this necessarily, but given, given the context, everything we know, what might be what's happening. So <clears throat> uh, does the author say, uh, that the particles sound like dinosaurs are bands uh, to explain confusing info in simple terms. Uh, well, if they're giving it the names of 
dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, first of all, are not simple terms. Uh, but I don't think they're talking about terminology per se here. I think they're saying uh, the author is referring to as a dinosaur as a band so that we understand it better. And the truth of the matter is we don't understand it better. We're not the scientists doing this. So uh, we can call we can call it, uh, you know, happy boy, and it, it's not it's not going to help anything here. So uh, the speaker refers to the familiar object events and the lines most likely to explain confusing info in simple terms to help the reader understand. No, there's no explanation of what's going on here. So so a ain't the thing. Okay, is the speaker referring to the familiar objects like dinosaurs and and bands? Uh, and the most likely to demonstrate how scientific ideas can be explained by describing situations that many people are familiar with. Uh, B might be true, and it's good. It's good to um, uh, bring things down and trivialize them for lay people. But that's not again, just like A. That's not what's going on here. Okay, so B goodbye. Uh, does the speaker refer to dinosaurs and bands? Uh, to emphasize that the process being used to research particles is still in the early stages of development. Okay, I don't even know where this is coming from, left field. I don't know if they're talking about like early animals or dinosaurs or something here. I really don't know where they're going, and I hate to visualize what this C is saying about bands. So C just, just seems to be a distractor that's so distracting it's ridiculous. Um, C is more silly than the actual boldface stuff here. So uh, and then uh, we're left with only D. So process of elimination tells us the answer better be D. So I'm going to circle it tensely. Uh, so does the speaker refer to dinosaurs and bands to suggest that the scientific language used to describe the particles seems silly by making a humorous comparison? Yeah, so if you go back to that line that talked about quarks and all this other stuff, and they sound like cute little names. Uh, and I guess, you know, T-Rex or, you know, the Flintstones dog is named Dino for dinosaur or something or, you know, just just silly stuff like that. So um, so this 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 question uh, doesn't really belong on the SHSAT. Uh, this was probably the easiest question of the group, at least it was for me. Um, it's just that was added in. It's it's almost if you would ask what what should be removed. You know, if this is the revising editing section B, uh, this would be the line I would say should be deleted from the poem. You know, it, it doesn't really seem to help anybody here. Uh, and But what it does do, though, is the fact that it mentions somebody's garage, because garage, I think, is mentioned in the poem at least twice, and I think three times, all right? So, um, because I think it refers to the atom uh, going around the collider. It mentions the garage here, and I think I think in the last stanza, it mentions the scientist being in a garage, although I don't think it meant that literally. I think it meant that figuratively. Okay. Um, all right. Read line 36 to 39 from the poem. So the nice thing is giving us the line references, but it's actually giving us the part. Uh, both together and apart. So let's go get the context of that a little bit real quick, 36 to 39. I think this is where it's comparing uh, the atom spinning, right? So... Yeah, they spin, and it is only down there in the darkness, and the vast garage. So that's the other reference to the uh, to the thing there, uh, the vast darkness in the vast garage where physicists jot down what they can, whatever whatever it seems most real that they let us perceive their wild dancing, uh, combusting to make to the music they make. All right, so let's go back to that question. I hope it's the last question. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, so they band together. Oh, sorry. The, this was from the lines just before what I read. Ah, they they both together and apart what keeps together the pencil in your right hand as well as separate from, say, Jupiter. All right. So uh, you guys can refer back. There's too much scrolling back and forth. Um, the nice thing about test day is you have the paper in front of you and you can kind of flip back and forth. And sometimes the questions are actually facing uh, the passage that you're doing. But at this point, we're, we're six questions in or something. So 
Um, the poet most likely includes these lines to emphasize what? That it's important for the physicists to continue their research about particles. So I believe, the, so this is an author's point of view, an APOV. Okay, I believe the author does believe E, but I don't know that these lines do that, okay? Um, this is about the spinning and about the interaction with the gravity versus the thing where I mentioned a magnet can pull and, and repel and things like that. And the particles are doing different stuff based on their charges and whatever the case may be. Uh, we don't really need to get into the physics because that's, that's a sidebar. And the, uh, the poet never gets into the physics really either. So the poet most likely include these to emphasize that it is important for physicists to continue their research. Um, I think if that was a general question, I would go with the E completely. I don't believe that's what those lines are referring to, though. Goodbye, E. Uh, did the poet include these to emphasize that particles have a powerful effect on everything? Yes, part of the poem is about the powerful effect. Um, in fact, the word powerful effect is mentioned, I think, just in the in the 20s, in the line 20s, it uses the word powerful effect. Or it was in one of the questions we just saw. Um, so F completely seems like the right answer. Uh, I'm going to double check it with two checks. I don't mean I'm going to recheck it. I just mean I'm going to give it checks. Uh, did the poet most likely include these to emphasize the discovery about particles provide little info? Uh, no. The, I think they're providing information. Uh, it's not about they're providing little information. I don't know where that came from. And furthermore, I don't know that that's the case. I, I guess if the comparison Jupiter is gigantic and the pencil in your hand is tiny, but that that's not where this is going at all. So that's just a distractor answer. Uh, did the poet most likely include this uh, to emphasize that the study of particles and the study of objects in space are similar? Yes, I, I I think that's part of it as well. Okay, that was definitely a part of what the passage is about. Um, however, uh, this bold face thing here is not necessarily about each. Um, I think the point was because it's talking about gravity and pull pull apart and pull together. Uh, it's just about the powerful effect that's happening with particles. Okay, so for that reason, the answer is F. And these questions never ending. So let's go on to the next one. Um, okay, this one, they don't give the quote. We'll have to scroll back to that. Ah. Okay, let, let's try to do, uh, okay, 39 through 44 is part of 33 through 34. So let's try to answer 48 first. And I believe that's the last two questions. Please let it be. Yes, it is. Okay. So let's do, let's do 49 uh, first, or 40, 48 first, and then we'll go back to 47. So they spin, and it is only down there in the darkness, in the vast sidebar, in the vast garage where physicists jot down what they can, whatever seems the most real end sidebar, that they let us perceive the wild dancing, combusting to the music they make. Another way to read that is to pull out the, da the end dashes. And only read the parts that are not that don't include the dashes. So they spin, and it is only down there in the darkness that they let us perceive their wild dancing, combusting to the music they make. This line reveals that the speaker reveal the, the lines reveal the speaker's frustration. Is the speaker frustrated with the research that physicists use? No. I don't I don't think the the speaker is upset or anything like that. Um it sounds weird. This this whole thing sounds weird, but you have to put everything in context. But I don't think the author's frustrated. Uh, the speaker is not frustrated at all. I don't think the author's frustrated either. Uh, the, the these lines reveal that the speaker believes that the physicists are frantically working towards a new discovery. Um, even though this is about research, it doesn't quite raise to to a team status about a new discovery per se so and i don't see anything he here um about th the scientists frantically working um the thing about combusting and 
exploding and wild dancing. Um, that's not what that's not what that's about. That's that's about the atoms and stuff. So uh, F is not there. Uh, G. <clears throat> Uh, the lines reveal that the speaker is, is interested in physicists and their studies of particles. Well, yeah, the author starts out being curious. That was based on another question and is raising these questions about where the things are, how to find them, what do they look like, all those kind of things like that. Um, so I think the speaker is interested in that. Um, now, does this bold face uh, talk about it? So this is they spin and is only down there in the darkness that they let us perceive the wild dancing. But there's also the part inside of here and the vast garage where physicists jot down what they can, what seems most real, okay? So the, the physicists are working, not necessarily frantic, frantically. Jotting something down doesn't mean a, you know, you're in a rush. It just means you're writing it down, especially in the context of this passage. Nothing was, was being rushed or anything like that. So, um, so I, I think that the, the speaker does have that interest uh, in not only the physicists, but also in what they're, they're doing. Again, the main idea is about the research in, into the particles and about exploring further about unresolved and unsolved. Okay, so G, G definitely works to that extent. Uh, and the bold face works to that extent as well. The bold face on 48 here. Uh, the lines reveal the speaker's certainty, certainty that the physicists are working in secrecy. So the idea that that they're in this garage basement kind of atmosphere um, is almost pulling, you know, a, a card out of Hollywood. Uh, I, do, I don't, that's, I, I was going to say, I don't think, I know that's not where the author is going here. So H, H is out the window. Uh, the only other one we have left is G. Um, I don't, find G weak or strong, I just find that G is, okay? Uh, and then we have 39 through 44 here. This reference is 33 to 44. So let's look at 33 to 39 and try to um, get it here. I wish I could copy and paste that. And that will be the last question, yeehaw. Okay, so basically it's it's the top of the paragraph here up until here. So the one thing we know for sure is that they spin. This is how gravity enters our world. Well, I'll just read the whole thing that's going from up until 44. Uh, the one thing we know for sure is that they spin. This is how gravity enters our world, how our world is held together and apart. What keeps... Uh, Together, the pencil in your hand right now, as well as the separate from, say, Jupiter. They spin and is only down there in the darkness and the vast garage, yada, yada. Okay, so it's basically asking us something about the last stanza. Okay, so the last stanza concludes the poem by emphasizing which central idea. All right, so again, is it a different central idea? Is there more than one main idea here? I think the main idea is still about exploring and researching unsolved slash unresolved uh, aspects about the particles, right? Uh, again, relating to the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe and all these cool things like that. So. Uh, is it emphasizing the exciting work that the physicists conduct, providing info about fundamental aspects of the universe? Yeah, of course it is. Okay, is it about the unusual work of the physicists is carried out in unconventional locations and in special conditions? Um, again, this kind of ties back to the other question where it's about secrecy and all this other stuff. Um, yeah, the the probably in uh, excluded areas and all these other kind of things like that, but um, I don't think that's the main idea of the passage or even of the last paragraph, the last stanza. So goodbye, B, good riddance, right? Uh, is this emphasizing that physicists are learning about the unpredictable behavior of the particles? 
that break up into matter and the universe. Uh, I don't. I'm not convinced that the passage I ever told us anything broke up, and I'm not convinced the passage really gets into the unpredictability of it. Right? The, even though the Scott mentioned scientific terms, the names of the, the particles, it didn't get too tentacles. So um, all we really know here that we can grok out of this is that there's research occurring. So goodbye, C. Okay. And is this emphasizing the poem? Is the last stanza emphasizing that uh, physicists enthusiastically share their discoveries? Their research yields because most people can relate to their findings. Um, I think up to right there, uh, that was fine. But then it says because most people can relate to their findings. Most people are not physicists or scientists. So, bro, sorry. This is not about the, the average person uh, becoming a physicist. So, uh, even though physicists may want to share them, their findings, and to share them enthusiastically, uh, it says because it, the reason they want to share them enthusiastic is not because the whole all, most people, right? It didn't say some people; it said most people. So that word "most" and because kills that answer choice. So D is out the window. We're left with A. Let's just confirm it. Although I was enthusiastic about A, so the last stanza concludes the poem by emphasizing which central idea: that the exciting work. That physicists conduct provide info about fundamental aspects of the universe. Uh, they could have removed exciting, and it still works. Uh, although I think the author uh, is kind of enamored about uh, the whole uh, about the physicists and the process and so on. Um, in fact, uh, if that wasn't true, the author probably would not have written the poem in the first place. Imagine not only documenting it, but they wrote a poem. All right, so. Uh, for that reason, absolutely A. Okay. Um, all right. We still have a few people in the lobby. Everybody's so quiet. I know this is poetry. Uh, anybody have any last-minute questions? Otherwise, we're going to end this. Uh, let's see how we did here. Uh, we're an hour and eight minutes. Uh, I'm never going to get that time back on my life. Uh, in any event, uh, that's the deal. Please like, please subscribe. As you can see, this is a lot of work, um, and I'm doing this for free. For free. This is for free. Did you hear? This is for free. Uh, have any questions, please email me at the bottom, griggstutoringnyc at gmail.com. I am going to pass out. Actually, I have to tutor a student in 15 minutes, so I'm going to pass out for 15 minutes. Live long and prosper. Uh, hopefully, you do well in the SHSAT. And hopefully this and the bird talk uh, passage helps you in the poetry section. I've also reviewed other handbooks, including the poetry passages. Uh, go look at those. Uh, you can go to gregstutoringnyc.com uh, slash shsat-handbook-reviews. So gregstutoringnyc.com slash shazat-handbook-reviews with dashes between them. Yeah. See you guys later.